Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, here we go again. We're going to bring you up to date with all the things stratospheric, all the latest stratospheric developments. We're going to have a look at some forecast data for the uh, strat and we will do a review of a historic winter. Uh, this week we're looking at winter 1968-1969 and seeing how that played out from a stratospheric perspective. Of course, very cold February in uh, 1969 with lots of snow as well. We shall see whether that was stratosphere induced. I'll be coming up later on in the video. So please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Make sure to check when you're doing that. First video for 6am broadcast. We're going to be live at 6pm with your 10 to 14 day. Oh, I shall see you a little bit later on for our Wednesday uh, live stream. Right, OK, let's start off with the current situation in terms of temperatures at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. So the grey line is the trend line and the uh, black line is the um, current temperature and where we've been through this season. So we actually have, we actually have had a colder than average stratospheric temperature at 10 HPA in the uh, North Pole over the past uh, few months, actually. We go way back to the beginning of the winter, really, with this in December, and we see that throughout the entire winter, the uh, temperature at 10 HPA has generally been trending colder than average. We're still colder than average now. We're hovering around uh, minus 80. If we go lower down to 30 HPA, check this out. There we have uh, been even colder. Goodness gracious me, we virtually went down to uh, minus 90 there around the uh, turn of the month. At this point in the year, uh, the temperature at 10 HPA should be around minus 68, minus 67. So <laughs> getting on for over 20 degrees. Hold on. <coughs> So, so even getting on for like 20 degrees uh, below average. We still remain colder than average at the moment, very substantially so. Uh, so clearly, uh, we have got uh, you know a strong part of water. When you see the the um, temperature at 10 and 30. 30 HPA getting that cold, getting that low, that tells you that you must have uh, a very strong uh, stratospheric polar vortex anyway. Well, let's see whether this is going to uh, keep up. So, uh, this is the latest GFS temperature forecast for uh, 10 HPA. Notice these uh, green and yellow colours just here. That's a slight uh, warming of stratosphere beginning to take place over Siberia. But the blue and purple colours over the Arctic and the pole itself telling us that cold temperatures remain at 10 HPA. Now, as we go through the uh, next few days, we're going to find that warming over Siberia intensifying and moving over to the uh, western Canadian side of the uh, Arctic as well, causing a bit of a displacement event of the stratospheric polar vortex. So by the time we get through to the 13th of February, We've got the coldest uh, colours, which are the blues and purples, being pushed out into the North Atlantic and into uh, Northern Europe. Um, and over the pole itself, we are seeing the temperature lifting up a little bit. So I think we're probably going up to about minus 50 to minus 40. So if we go back here, we will probably see the black line do something like this over the uh, next week or so. Well, I reckon the black line will go up to about there, maybe. Um, no, we are going to get a warming of Saturday. We are finally going to be above average with the temperature at 10 HP. But that is a lot, a long way short of like a genuine uh, sort of SSW sun stratospheric warming event. Now, let's see what happens in the extended range. Any further warming? Well, actually, that uh, warming kind of peters out, fizzles out, and uh, that's how we end up on the GFS 6 z run. Still a displacement of a stratospheric polar vortex, looking a lot weaker, a lot shrunken, pushed over towards the uh, Atlantic, Canadian, and at European side of the Arctic. No SSW on this GFS run. The GFS and its ensembles have really backed off the idea of an SSW. Remember, like a couple of days ago, two or three days ago, the GFS operations and the ensembles were being very bullish about the chance of an SSW during the middle part of February. Done a reverse ferry <laughs> on that big time um, since. Uh, yesterday. So at the moment we're still waiting for an SSW. What tends to happen with a GFS is that it could be a bit progressive. So I reckon I'm looking out for an SSW. I reckon we will get an SSW, but I think it will happen right at the end of February, probably the first week of March, when we get the uh, sudden stratospheric warming of there. I think the GFS was picking up on the on the 
potential, but was too progressive uh, with it. So about another week. This gets us 21st February. I would say like another week after that. That's when I think we might get an SSW. But this first SSW, this, well, not an SSW, but this first warming of the strategy here, could well be like a precursor to the main event, which I think will happen a couple of weeks after that. That's the 13th of February. Let's have a look at the ECM extended forecast. Temperature numbers at 10 HPA. So that's next week's warming. Uh, stretched out from eastern Siberia through towards uh, Canada there. Displaced of them at the stratospheric polar vortex. So that's week one, uh, 10th to the 17th of February. That's week two. So uh, then we see that first warming easy on. But picking up on perhaps another warming somewhere to Towards the Atlantic beginning to get going. That's week three. Then we see a bit of a warming, presumably the warming that starts off in the Atlantic, moving over towards Siberia, maybe. That's week four. That's intensification. That is the 3rd to the 10th of March. Intensification of that warming over Siberia. That is the time frame. That first week of March. That's the time frame. I'm, I think we might get an SSW. And that intensifies further into week 5. Which is the 17th of March. On the temperature scale. We're going to go into the uh, yellow colours there. Really. Say we're having or we've got an SSW. So as it is. That is some way short of an SSW. Lifting the temperature to about 20 to 30 degrees uh, above average. So it's 5 weeks away. It's quite a strong signal from the ECM so I think it's going to be like that first week 10 days of March possibly the end of February I think it's more likely into the first week of March that we could see uh, a sudden stratospheric warming event of course that will impact the string the spring because we'll be <laughs> we'll be out of meteorological winter by then so Second half of March, first half of April is when we might get a uh, tropospheric response to that. This is how the uh, mean zone of wind forecast is looking for the next uh, six weeks. So starting off with very, very strong zone of winds, got a really strong um, stratospheric polar vortex c combined with those really cold temperatures at 10 HPA. We see that coming down uh, next week as we get that first one. So it's going to produce a bit of a deceleration of the zone of wind, but not for long. Then, <laughs> then it's picking back up again and uh, go really strong once more. But it's like the last uh, the last week or so of February into the first half of March. That's when we see the blue line starting to tumble away. We have got quite a lot of ensemble members now, ensemble blue members, that are going for a reversal of zone wins. They are technical SSWs uh, being predicted there. And I would expect to see uh, that number grow through the first week or so of uh, March in the next couple of weeks. So I think we're going to get an SSW. I think it will happen early March. Let me know in the comments what you think. But for the time being, uh, the GFS has backed off big time on those uh, SSW predictions. And some of them were really crazy. If you're watching the live stream on Sunday, we did see some ensemble members that were really, really, really crazy uh, with the uh, SSW forecast. Right, that's what you had to take with all things stratospheric. Let's have a look at Pals Winter then before we go. So, uh, we're going to look at 1968-1969. Today, the big freeze of February 1969 was well and truly underway by this point. Let's see how that happens. We start on the 1st of December. Blue colours here, these are the cold temperatures in the strategy over North Pole, stratospheric polar vortex going through to the 10th of December. Those blue colours maintain a little bit of a displacement event of the stratospheric polar vortex towards the North Atlantic, Northern Europe, a bit of a warming happening over Siberia, though a long way short of an SSW. That is the uh, 15th of December. So again, got this warming over Siberia, trying to push in towards the Arctic. Again, displacement event of the uh, stratospheric polar vortex, the SPV, into Canada, North Atlantic, Northern Europe there. But uh, the polar vortex is still well and truly in business. That takes you to the 20th of December. Now the polar vortex is looking a little bit ragged, I have to say, um, and really quite weak and shrunken. Actually, although there hasn't been any particular strong warming of the stratosphere, so must have just been quite a weak uh, SPV that we have in December 1968. Now, that's uh, Christmas Day. We've seen the stratospheric polar vortex again, a bit displaced towards the North Atlantic and uh, Canada, starting to look like it's uh, getting its act together 
uh, again, though. And that takes us through to New Year's Eve of uh, 1968. It was a cold Christmas week um, in 1968 for the UK and a nice little white Christmas, actually. Um, unexpected, unforecast white Christmas as well through uh, parts of Wales, the Midlands, and Northern England. But I digress. It's New Year's Eve um, on 1968. So, again, we see people warming across southern parts of Europe. And still the displacement of a shut threat polar vortex over towards North America, Canada, Greenland and the North Atlantic. Now, let's get into 1969 and uh, see what happens. So uh, this is going to be New Year's Day. Uh, if I can get up, there we go. Uh, New Year's Day of 1969, there we are. And we see, again, the blue colours displaced towards Canada, Greenland and the North Atlantic. Let's go through to the 5th of January. 69. Again, we see the Shaftesbury Polar Vortex maybe trying to get back to its more typical position. Again, cold as well, going down to minus 80 there, close to Greenland. 10th of January. Looks like that. Again, we've got to Shaftesbury Polar Vortex looking pretty cold now. And in a more typical position as well, going back towards the pole and towards uh, Greenland and whatnot. That's the 20th of January. So warming starting to appear over... Uh, Europe and into uh, Russia as well. Meanwhile, the polar vortex itself, uh, well and truly entrenched in grain over top of the uh, North Pole. Let's get through to about 27th of January. That warming is still there over Siberia, but it's short of an XSW. And we're not far away now from the start of the big freeze. I think the freeze uh, started at the, uh, at the end of January, about the 30th, 31st of January, is when the cold wind started from the north, I think. Um, no, I mean... Not shutter juice this time. Yes, we have got a bit of displacement of shutter polar vortex. It's very cold uh, temperature as well. Now to minus 84 uh, towards Greenland, Iceland and Northern Europe and into the North Atlantic. So a bit of a displacement event as we've seen uh, most of this winter. But that's a long way short of an SSW. There will be no reversal of uh, zonal winds and no sort of chopper strike response. That's the last day of January when the cold spell is uh, setting up. So uh, this cold spell in uh, 1969... And the blocking that accompanied it was not uh, stratospheric induced in any way, really, I don't think. There must have just been a decoupling of the stratosphere and the troposphere. That's the first day of February. Again, we see quite a significant warming over Siberia, but nowhere near the pole. And, uh, you know, the stratospheric polar vortex still well and truly in business. Let's have a look at the chart for the 1st of February uh, of 69. That's how it looks. So into a cold sort of northwesterly type flow at that point and the month just gets colder actually so if we go through to about the 7th of uh, february uh look at that real arctic blast via a mid-atlantic ridge going up towards greenland and the month just say generally cold and winter has lots of snow in uh, 1969, I think it comes out with CT of about 1 degree, 0 0.9, something like that, 1.1. 1 .1. um, no, around one, 1 Celsius for the CT in 1969. No, very calm winter month, but not, not a sub-zero uh, CT. In terms of the strategy, nothing happening to explain that at all. The blue colours, you know, the polar vortex still went and truly um, there on the uh, 7th of February. And indeed, on the Valentine's Day of 69 as well, 22nd of February. Again, trying to get a bit of a warming going over Russia, but nothing much happening. Stratospheric polar water. Just begin to shrink a little bit, coming towards the end of winter uh, now. So about, you know, climatology uh, more than anything. And that's our look on the 27th of February. Let's get through to the last day of the month. And that gets us to 28th of February. 1969, and no uh, SSW of note um, going on at all. So that was a winter without a sudden stratospheric uh, warming event, and the prolonged cold and very snowy spell that happens in uh, February 1969 is not explained stratosphere-wise at all. What happened must have been a decoupling of the stratosphere and the troposphere. Uh, and, you know, that's the same for something that we've seen other, uh, in other uh, winters as well, when we've been doing these so some winters are stratospheric um, impacted, you know, and, and, and developed from an SSW, 1947, a uh, classic example of that. This winter, no, it wasn't stratospheric induced at all. We just had a decoupling of the strat 
and Machop, telling us that even if you don't get SSW, you can sometimes get appreciable levels of cold and wintry weather. And of course, the um, the prime example of that is December 1969, uh, December 20th, I should say, uh, but December to remember with uh, a sub zero CT December, almost cold as in the entire CT index back to 1659, and no SSW going on at all to explain that, just a decoupling of strata of chop. And we looked at that winter in an earlier Strat Watch. Right, that's what you're today with all things Stratosphere Wide. So if you enjoyed the video, if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you're doing that. And uh, we're going to be back at 6 p.m. with your 10 to 14 day. Uh, so I see you a little bit later on for that one. For episode 10 of Strat Watch, that's now. And thanks so much.